This is a tutorial for how we can set our homework on Teams via quizzes and um, how we can make them consistent so that the experience of the children when they log on is the same in every year group. So the very first thing you need to do is to create the quiz. I'm going to do this in sections so that we are clear on each section. So we name the quiz and we name it um, weekly quiz and then you need to give it the date, whatever the date is. Okay. And you don't necessarily need to put a description in there. Now, for some reason, it's got some weird owed question. I'm going to get rid of that. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section. So I'll just do that again, just in case. And um, so I could add new downward arrow add a section and this section is going to be our geography questions geography we started our geography topic on Gambia this week here questions to answer about it. Okay, and now I add a question. And the first question I'm going to add is a choice question. So, um, in which continent is Gambia? I can't spell continent, obviously. And I'm going to give uh, four choices. The first choice is Europe, second choice is Asia, third choice is Africa, fourth choice is South America. Okay, and I tick the right one and I give it a point. It's worth one point. And now I'm going to add another question. And again, I'm going to make this choice. Um, but this one, I'm going to give some fairly plausible answers to really check their understanding. So the question I'm going to ask are, what are the three main impacts of changes in weather patterns on Gambia. And because I want to make sure that they are, we're really just checking their, their knowledge here and checking that they do have a, an understand, a full understanding, I'm going to put in three different choices and they're going to be all plausible. Drought, Poverty, famine, option two, famine, drought, and lack of food. Add an option. Poverty, lack of plants, dusty landscape. And put again, tick it where the right answer is. Now I'm going to add one more question here, and this one's going to be a text one, and I'm actually going to make it a long answer just in case we want to make it a long answer, so I'll have to mark this like I would any other piece of work. And what is the difference between weather and climate?
So now it's time to add another section. And to do that, we click on Add New. I didn't mean to do that, so come off that. Click on Add New. And go on the down arrow and click Section. And this section is going to be our English. And for the purpose of this sample one, we've been doing front of the verb years. So this week, we have been reminding ourselves about fronted adverbials. I don't know why I put capital letters in there, I don't need to. Fronted adverbials. We did these all the way back in year four. put some instructions here as well. In these examples, you will need to decide whether, no, um, whether there is a fronted adverbial. That you will need to one decide whether there's a fronted adverbial, two, if there is, then you will type the fronted adverbial in the answer box. Okay, so now I'm going to add some questions. So here's my first question then. Before I go to bed, I always read my book for 15 minutes. Now, to make life easy for myself and to make sure that it can be marked automatically, I can add the answer here. So I click on Add Answer, and all I'm going to do there is copy and paste, and then click Add. And that's my answer to that question there. Give it a point score. Now add new. So this is my final question in this section, and the answer to this one is there is no front of the verbio, and so I've put two correct answers there, none with a capital and none without a capital, just in case, and I'm not actually sure how sophisticated the answering system is and whether you have to have exactly the right words or not, so I've put that in there. So that's the end of that section. So we're about to do our third section now, which is science, and I just wanted to show you during this section a couple of different ways that you could present the same question. So we're going to add our new section, and that is science. I'm sorry, by the way, about the um, hearing the taps of the uh, keys. I don't know how to turn that off. Um, science, and um, just uh, this week we have been learning about the circulatory system. So we're going to add a question. The first question I'm going to add is a text question. So I will need to mark this one like I do any other piece of work. And it is, what is the circulatory system? I'll make that a long answer, give it a point score, and that's that one there. So this next one, I'm going to add the same questions twice, um, but using a slightly different way of doing it. So I add my next one, and I can add a choice question. So this could be a choice question, um, and it is basically option is agree and Option two will be disagree. 
and the question of this one is um, arteries carry blood to the heart. Okay, uh, I'm going to add in a insert an image for that one to remind people about the bit on the schema that we had. And somewhere in here, I've got this. I put it there. Artery, I think. Uh, yeah, that was the artery. And that wasn't the artery. That's uh, the wrong image. Sorry about that. So I've got an image there. That image comes from the schema, so it reminds them a bit about what we're talking about. So that's one way of doing that. And then I've got one more multiple choice question I could add the same type of thing. So I add another, oh, it's not a text question. Delete that one. Add a choice question, and it will be, again, agree or disagree. disagree and um, the question in this one is going to be uh, capillaries capillaries um, connect arteries and veins okay so do you agree disagree now I remembered on the last question that I actually should have ticked the right answer and I didn't so on this one, the answer is agree. On that one, the answer was disagree. Okay, so that's that. So that was one way then I could put those two questions in. I could put them as agree or disagree, multiple choice questions. And the advantage of doing that is that it enables me to put in the right answer so that the children get it right or wrong and it marks it automatically. Another way you could do that if you fancied would be to use a different type of question and that would be to use this arrow here and we're going to go for a uh, Likert. Okay, so the same, the two questions in here, the question in here is, do you agree with the degree or disagree with the following statements and in here option one we'll put agree option two we'll put disagree delete. option three we will delete option four we'll delete and option five we'll delete and in here then I put the same statements I'm just going to copy and paste them for the and I won't actually um, Statement one was the arteries carry blood to the heart. And statement two was that um, capillaries, oops, capillaries uh, connect arteries and veins. So now what they can do is they can just choose which one, whether they agree or disagree on each of those. So there are strengths and weaknesses to both of those. The weakness, the strength of this, I suppose, is that it's, um, it presents it in a different way. So it rings the changes a little bit. And also it's probably slightly unbalanced, a bit easier and quicker to do. The disadvantage is that you would have to look at their answer and mark it because whereas these questions here, the multiple choice, it would tell them if they've got it right or not. This one here, it wouldn't, you would have to look at it. But I'll leave them both there so that you can make a decision about which one you wanted. So this is our final section of questions, um, and this is on maths. And we, it says this week we've been looking at converting units. And I started off by this very simple question, and it's there because it's, it's needed for the other two questions that we're doing. So look at this symbol, what does it mean? And I've put in a few different potential answers there because I thought there might be a little bit of variance about what children write. So that's that one. This next one 
is around us having to make a choice about what we actually want to do with the answer. So how much information do we want to draw out of it? Is it just that we want to check they can get it right? Or do we want to see how they get it right? And what I've done, as you can see here, look, I've got two different questions. Have a look at the question, write the answer in the box, or have a look at the question, write your answer and show how you worked it out. Now, the chances are, if you're going to go for the second one of those, you're probably going to click long answer and have a look at it yourself to see whether they get it right or not. You could attempt, of course, to keep it as a short answer and to write down exactly the steps that you think they would take. But you are running a quite a long, a big risk there of them not writing it exactly as you wanted it to, to see it. Anyway, so the question goes up and I'm going to put the question as an image because I clipped it from White Rose. Uh, and let's go, I think it was that one there. Uh, no, that's more tricky. That go for that one there. Okay, so um, here there are two questions. Now you might then say, um, add, put your answer with a comma between them, or you might just say you might actually clip this again and put this as, as two different questions. That's sort of up to you, really. Uh, let's see if I can crop it directly in here. Uh, no, to be can have a look at that. Um, so let's imagine that I wanted the answer just to be in, in two separate sections, or the answers could be... No, actually pause that. Okay, so I've amended this question slightly now, so I've given them exactly what it could look like, and then written that in the box there. Now, I have to say, I think probably you would only do this with the older children who would probably understand your example given. Um, if not, you would probably just actually crop that as two separate questions and put them up there. So here's the final question then. And I add this as a text. I could add it as a choice. It depends on what you're doing, obviously. And um, it is, uh, so this one, let's imagine I wanted to find out whether the children really knew how to understand it, whether they really understood it and how to solve it. So um, solve this problem and type out how you solved it. And on that one, again, I upload an image that I cropped from White Rose. Nope, got that one already. Oh no. And there you go. So that's my um, problem, and I'm going to put that as a long answer. It's worth one point. And that's it. So that's where they can then write their answer. And they need to show how they solved it as well. Now, it, it doesn't have to be that way. I can just type in the answer. Um, and I can just realize I put 2.6 miles, and that was actually 2.5 miles. So let's make sure that's corrected. Uh, how do I do that? Okay, down. I'll have to add that in properly. Eva was um, 16 kilometers and Ted was 2.5 miles. Add. So there you go. So that's it. That's all of the quiz done. So now we've finished the quiz, there's just a couple more things to do just before we uh, it's ready to post as an assignment. So we add one more section, and that's just the ending section. And this could be, well done. No, it could be, or we could call it spellings. Oops. And TT Rockstars. And it just simply is this. Well done for completing quiz. Now you need to complete um, your TT Rockstars oh, what's wrong with me today? and spellings. Here are the links. Rockstars. I don't know 
spells wrong with me today. I can't uh, type or spell. And that you would turn that into a link by putting the link there and spelling shared. And you'd put the link there. So that is it. That's all you need to do. Okay, what you might do, if you really wanted to, you could choose a theme to make it look a bit cooler um, if you wanted to, but that's not what you, you don't have to do that. It just um, makes it a bit more, it can make it a bit more fun. Okay, so that's it. That's your quiz then done. If I preview my quiz, it goes through. There's my English section. There's my science section, and there's my math section. Remember in that science section, I had two different ways of doing the same question. And there's my final section with the links. Okay, brilliant. Now all we need to do is we need to make sure that we do our instructions on the assignment page so that it's pretty easy and obvious for everybody. So I've done the quiz, now I need to do is set it as an assignment and I, the first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste the links, obviously I haven't got the actual links here but let's imagine I did, the links from here to save me having to find them and type them again. So I go to my team and I go to assignments and I go to create and I go to, I know it sounds crazy but we're going to go to quiz. And then it brings you up all the quizzes you've done, or you can create the new quiz. I'm going to actually create, I'm going to actually start, the, put in the one that we just done. So click on that one. And there's the link to it. And here's the, uh, the same title, which we need to put the date on it. And in the instructions, I will do, um, just make it sound a bit friendly. Enjoy, great work, great learning great learning this week everyone have a go at these um, questions from our what, from what we've studied Once you have finished, no, don't forget to also practice your times tables and spellings. Insert the links and then I'm also going to, so I'm also, to make life really easy for everybody so they can see where everything is, I'm also going to insert the spellings. Now, if you're anything like me, I would have um, produced the spellings in a Word document so then I know that, number one, I've got them for future reference. Number two, it's easy to print out if anybody needed a printout. Uh, number three, it's easy for me to copy and paste those then into TT Rockstars and I can put them here. So I'm also going to say here, um, here are the spellings for this week. And I've got a table which I've put them together in there you go and then I just assign it everything happy I'm happy with everything I obviously change all the date and all the rest of it and then I click assign and that's it if I now need to see what it looks like for the everybody um, I, I think that was here Okay, I've just got one person, I've left one person, I hope Martha doesn't mind, I've left one person in my um, list of children, but let's have a look at what it looks like from student view, and here we go, oh, it's not as nice as a table, never mind, okay, but my spellings are there, ah, right, okay, well that's told me something here, because that's not quite how I wanted it to be, so what I'd need to do is not put it in a table, 
for this we'll copy and paste it without the table and just have this separate so I'm just going to edit this because it's not quite what I want uh, edit the assignment okay so let's have a look at that let's take that out of there and put that in there instead and take it out of there Okay, there you go. Spanish very much. There you go. So that's a little bit better now. So let's have a quick check. What's it look like? Student view. There you go. All right. Perfect.